it's Roger Bisbee here from Skill Builder. What am I doing today? I'm building a shower room. I've been building this for a while actually. It's one of those sleeper projects that I get onto when I've got some spare time. And you know what happens when you do projects that you only do in your spare time, you never have any spare time and they hang around. So now full on, I'm gonna try and get this finished. I've built the dormer, I've lined it out. I've put in the insulation and then Rather than using plasterboard around the shower, I've been using this waterproof tile backing board from Elements. Now, there are several different makes of this around, but this one is made in the UK and it's a good deal cheaper than some of the competitors that are coming from mainland Europe. So it's the same stuff, it's good solid board. It's got a waterproof surface that's ideal for tiling onto and it's easy to fix and cut. So I've been around to showers over years and years as an emergency plumber that have caused problems because people have tiled onto plasterboard and then the thing moves and the water gets into the plasterboard and then all the tiles fall off the wall and what do people do when that happens a lot of people just put new plasterboard back and then they put the tiles back on now you can get water or moisture resistant board these days which is a lot better but to my mind, it's still nowhere as good as this tile backer board from Elements. So it's worth spending a little bit of extra money on. It's not, the price difference isn't that great anyway. And you can be sure that you've got a belt and braces job. Okay, that was a nice easy job screwing that to the wall and it's given me a great surface to tile onto perfectly waterproof pretty solid as well actually so i'm pleased with that now i can put the shower tray down against it do a trial fit on that and mark out the waste i already know where the waste is going to go roughly because i measured that out i had a look at it before i ordered the shower tray that's always a good idea because you never want to be in that position where the waste comes directly over a floor joist. I've seen guys who have just hacked out great lumps from the floor joist to get a waste in there, which is never a good idea. You're going to weaken that floor and uh, that's not what you want. So a bit of planning there is always worthwhile. So now I've got the base down and I've checked it with the level. The next thing I need to do is check that the actual shower tray itself is fairly flat, which it is. Sometimes if you store those on their end, they can bend over the matter of months. So if you've done that, check that it's level before, <coughs> excuse me, dust, before you go any further. Right, so I've got it, what I think is level on the sand and cement base. And then I've got a couple of banding straps. Pick these up off the ground in the builder's merchants. They used to wrap up blocks of bricks. And I'm gonna put those underneath. And the reason I want those underneath is because if I need to pick this thing up, <coughs> once it's down and it's against the wall, it's almost impossible to pick it up without some kind of help. So we'll just put those in there and the chances are I won't need to pick it up anyway, but if you do, they can stay in there afterwards. There's no problem with those. One more thing I need to do just around this trap here, there's a rubber seal. So we've got to make sure that's nice and clean. Now there is no need to put any sealant in with these. The rubber seal does, does the job perfectly well, but when you lower the shower tray into position, it can dislodge that rubber seal. So what I do, what I see a lot of plumbers doing, is to 
just put a little bit of silicone around the edge of it just to hold it in position just tack it almost in position then when you lower the shower tray down it's not going to flick it out of the groove and so you can be absolutely sure that that seal is nice and tight it's in position when you put the tray down dirty old level moment of truth slightly high on this outer edge so we don't tap it down I've seen people tap these down with a, a rubber mallet which is a bad bad idea because they can crack even if you hit them softly so all you do if it's not quite right you just literally just worry it into position like that just shimmy it down and then you can be sure you're all right i always use mcalpine traps on these jobs you can get cheaper traps you can get a trap for half the price of this one but i like these they've always stood me in good stead they actually come with a couple of different thicknesses of ceiling washer so you can pick the one that suits you best having said that which one did i pick the thin thick one or the thin one i guess it must have been the thick one but anyway there's the difference stick that on there that's got a taper on it very slight taper which means it's got a flat side to it and it's got a beveled side to it so the bevel side's got to go down so we stick that flat side on there do this dry because if you put any water or any silicon or anything like that in there all that does is lubricates it and squeezes the washer out the side so not a good idea to put any kind of silicone or any other sealant there they do say if you do put silicone in to make sure you use a neutral curing silicone because the stuff with the acetic acid in is likely to cause problems so you can see that's got a good load of thread it's pulling that waste trap up nice and tight under there so we really shouldn't have any problems at all. It's a nice flat bottom, a nice flat rubber seal. You can see that's nicely sat in there with that rubber seal. So there's never going to be any problem there. And that, to me, is why you go for something of slightly better quality because you can tighten it up nicely, do the job. That goes into collect the hair and all the other rubbish and that goes down on top that's protective capping which we take off last knockings now having done that I'll leave the rest of this polythene on the tray to protect it right up to the time when I do the next bit of sealing in So here's my little tale of woe. I was doing all right actually. I've got the tray in, I bedded it down on a nice sand and cement base, which you've got to do because if there's any tendency for it to settle down, you can end up snapping the tray. So you have to put a nice even bed under there and just gently work it down as I did. And I was just getting ready to seal around the edges prior to tiling and I noticed that there's a big crack that's opened up all the way across now it's going to continue so what's happened is it's obviously settled on the ends and broken its back slightly and really speaking I was always on a hide into nothing with this tray because although it's a very heavy bit of concrete if you like under there which is acrylic capped the fact that the waste hole is in the middle means that the tray is tapering down from both ends to get the fall.
so it's thinner in the middle than it is at the ends and that I'm afraid is an inherent fault that's something that you really don't want over a tray of this length to have your weak spot in the middle is always likely to be a problem now, I'm not saying that this happens with every one of these trays but I'm just saying that it's the last one I ever fit of this type. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tray out now, bit of a hassle, and I'm going to put in a Myra flight tray because I know those trays, I've used them before, and they're very strong, they're good, and uh, I'd rather pay a bit more money. Not that they're that expensive, actually. They've come down in price quite a lot. Uh, but I'd rather pay a bit more money and get a decent tray that I know is going to be all right because, you know, even if the company replaced this tray even if they did take it on the chin and say okay we're we'll replace it which i'm not sure they would because there's always this get out clause of having a thing completely evenly bedded there's no tensile strength in it at all so the problem for me is that this waste is now in the wrong place it was a real hassle getting that waste in and i've now got to work out with the myra flight tray the waste is going to be down that end, which is fine, but I've got to make sure it misses the joist down there. So, fun and games all the way around, but never mind, that's, uh, that's what we're here for, so the best thing to do is just get on with it and stop moaning. Mm -hmm.